Hi everyone, Tim here. Uh, thanks uh, for coming by the channel. I want to have a little chat today and I want to talk about uh, a phrase that we used to use uh, in the Marines. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I was in the Marine Corps for a little over 11 years on active duty. And uh, Marines have a little bit of a gallows humor. We used to joke around and say, hey man, payback is medevac, which would mean that if you did something bad to me, I'm going to do something disproportionately bad back. Uh, it was always meant as humor. Uh, but with most humor, there's a little bit of a kernel of truth. Uh, we would keep each other in check uh, by being willing to respond if necessary. It was very, very seldom necessary, right? It was just the attitude of being willing and ready to respond. And that would carry into our karate training where we would do certain drills with each other and uh, the instructor would show the drill and say, okay, now here's the attack, there's the defense, this is what's going to happen. Now remember, when you're done with this, you're going to switch roles and payback's medevac. So don't go too hard or any harder than your partner is willing to go. And that was the warning. And on very, very rare occasions, uh, you'd get paired up with someone that would go a little bit too hard and you'd have to pop them a couple of times on the way back. Most of the time, people would be too nice. And we need to think about this and parse this out, right? Uh, I've had my nose folded over a couple of times. I, I had this bone in here uh, pop pretty hard once. Uh, this isn't my real tooth. It, it was uh, broken up here on a kick and eventually it had to have a root canal and be replaced. These are the kinds of things that happen. Uh, I got a floater in, in my elbow here, what came down on someone's foot. Um, but in none of those cases did the person who hit me and had that advantage follow on to beat me to death which is what could potentially happen if you're really fighting for your life. So it's much better to learn that I was susceptible to a spinning back fist when I didn't have my, my hands up or that dropping the elbow down on someone's foot doesn't always go the way that I wanted it to go or maybe I shouldn't charge in when someone's doing a spinning back kick. Uh, it's good to learn the limitations of your ability in a safe training environment. And by safe, I mean you might come out of it with a bruise. You might come out of it with a black eye. That's okay. You're, you're not going to die. They're not going to kill you. And, and that's, that's fine. That, that actually builds a little bit of stoicism and ability to face something that's scary and dangerous. On the flip side, uh, I'm not sure we should do that every single time we train. And my thinking goes along these lines. Our body has a certain capacity to rebuild ourselves. And that's how we get the training effect. We go out and we work hard, uh, maybe do resistance training, maybe do endurance training, but we're breaking down the muscles. And then the body comes along and rebuilds them. Well, it's the same thing if you are doing that too much and you overtrain, as some athletes are at risk of doing at times, then instead of getting that additive building effect, you, you get to a point where eventually it starts to become degenerative and tears it down. That's when they start talking about overtraining. If you train karate and you've never been bruised, I, I think you're probably not doing it right. If you train karate and every time you train, you get bruised, I think maybe you're not doing it right. And I say that because when your body is taking care of those bruises, there's only so much capacity to rebuild itself and heal itself. What is it not doing? Is it maybe not taking care of some plaque buildup somewhere? Is it maybe not dealing with some form of virus that's coming in? Is it not dealing with some forms of cancer that you might be fighting off if you're constantly dealing with bruises? And if there's people that have medical backgrounds that have better information than this and, and they can shed more light on it, by all means, please do. But my working philosophy on this is, is that you need to have enough pressure on your training in terms of dealing with pain and dealing with something that's scary and dealing with something that maybe isn't very comfortable to push your envelope and get used to it. But if you're doing that all of the time to the detriment of your health, then maybe you need to back it off a little bit. Um, be nice to your friends. Remember that when you take your turn, they get to take their turn back. And remember that payback is medevac, but hopefully that's a joke. Hopefully you have good training partners that, that care for you, care for your progress, uh, want to push the boundaries, maybe make you a little bit uncomfortable, but not tear you down and tear you up. This is Tim. I hope you like the channel. Uh, if you do, you know, consider subscribing. We've got a number of different topics on here. Karate, Kobodo, some crossover from uh, Karate and Aikido. Uh, give us a shout. See what you like. Thanks.